in a couple of days, they called me back and they said, okay, we have a trainer for you. And now keep in mind that you are now like basically property of the company and they can do anything they want with you. So they can send you on a plane, they can put you on a bus, they can put you in a truck right out of the hotel. They can do a lot of things. And so what they did for me was they said, hey, we have a Greyhound bus ticket for you to Tennessee. And I was like, oh my gosh. and welcome back to another video. For this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what to expect on a trainer's truck. And if you stick around till the end, I will also share a little bit about my experience on my trainer's truck, because I know a lot of people have been asking, so I'm going to try to share a little bit of information here. And I want to let you guys know that this is going to be kind of a longer video because I'm putting a lot of information into a very <laughs> like I'm trying to just cram it all together and I'm hoping that this will just be like an all-in-one like everything you want to know that I could possibly give you because I mean I know there's like the thing is everybody's afraid of this and I want to help as best as I can because every situation is different, every trainer is going to be different, but I'm going to lay down some kind of things that you can expect no matter who your trainer is and how you can go about your situation to make it better for you. So there are a lot of videos on YouTube about people's experiences on a trainer's truck. You can watch them. There's probably more horror stories than good stories, but there's plenty of good stories out there and that's something to be weary of. Just realize that just because somebody else has a bad experience doesn't mean you're gonna have a bad experience and vice versa. So just be aware of that. People are, are just a little bit kind of salty sometimes when it comes to the training experience. It is, it is very hard and mentally challenging because you are on a truck with a trainer for quite a significant amount of time. So you need to keep that in mind that you're gonna butt heads a little bit. It's just all about how you go about it and how you make your experience. So let's go ahead and get into what it's going to be like meeting your trainer. I know a lot of companies do the whole, your trainer is this very secretive person, like you won't know who they are until you, like until they pick you up in their truck from whatever hotel or I guess training academy that you're at or they're gonna send you on a Greyhound bus to go meet your trainer and that's fun so it's it's always quite scary and and most of the time they will give you your trainers phone number so you can call them to make sure that you guys are on the same page and you guys can meet up when you first meet your trainer it's important that you're respectful to your trainer and you get to know them and you're respectful because you're going to be living in a very, very, very small space with somebody you don't know for quite some time. And sharing a walk-in size closet with somebody you don't even know is very challenging on its own. So for this, like I kind of established some ground rules that everybody should be taking into consideration. So no matter who your trainer is, you should be using like this set of ground rules that I've come up with as like a baseline. And I'm going to try to kind of read them to you. I wrote them on my website. So I have an article on my website about what to expect on a trainer's truck and I go into depth there. And I believe it's like a really good overview to help kind of calm your nerves because a lot of the nerves come from not knowing. You're not going to know what to expect and, and nobody's given you anything to like go off of because I don't know why, but trucking companies are all kind of like just throw you at it and let you figure it out when it comes to it and they don't really, there's no basis for anything. There's no standard procedure. So I've gone ahead and tried to come up with some ground rules that everybody should live by and this should make your life a whole lot easier and kind of give you something to go off of so you're not scared that you're gonna make somebody upset 
or you don't know what to do. So I have come up with six, six, six general ground rules. So for the first one, make sure you wake yourself up on time. It is not your trainer's responsibility to make sure that you wake up on time for work. So if they tell you you need to be up at 6 a.m. Or, or you start driving at 6 a.m., you need to obviously wake up before that with enough time to do whatever it is that you want to do before you start driving, whether that's take a shower or eat breakfast, get some coffee. Maybe you wanna take a lap around the truck stop because you're really freaking tired and you need to wake up. Make sure you have enough time to do these things so that way you're on time for work. Number two, your trainer isn't a mind reader. So if you have something that's bothering you or you have certain needs, you need to communicate them with them because just getting frustrated about something doesn't help anybody. It just makes everybody upset. So just make sure that you communicate how you feel and what your needs are to your trainer. Number three, respect your trainer's truck and their belongings. Think of it as you're a guest in their home. So they're basically setting aside some space for you to put your things and to live in their truck. And you need to respect that. This isn't, this isn't like um, a dorm room where half of it's yours. It's basically all of theirs and they are just allowing you to have some space on the truck. And as horrible as that sounds, I mean, it, it can work out all right. You just need to, to keep that in mind that this is not your space. They can kick you out at any time. So you just need to make sure that you respect their stuff and in turn, they should respect your stuff. Number four, don't talk about hot button topics. So try to avoid things like religion or politics. You guys might be on the same page, you guys might not. And it's really not worth it to make somebody frustrated in a walk-in size closet, trust me. <laughs> and it's just, you, you gotta think of it as a professional atmosphere. You're going there to work, to learn. These aren't, it's cool. If you, if you make friends with your trainer, that's cool, but you don't need to have everything in common and to avoid these topics at first is probably in your best interest. Number five, maintain good personal hygiene. I know that it's hard to get acclimated to life on the road, but you need to make sure that you take care of yourself because your trainer is not going to like having a stinky co-driver with them. It just makes it more frustrating for them because they're, they're treating you as a guest in their house and they obviously don't want to bring in somebody who smells really bad. So just remember to take a shower and wipe things down and try to take care of yourself while you're on their truck brush your teeth every day things like that just just try to maintain you know good personal hygiene last but not least work hard and remember that you're there to learn it's a job you're there to learn a job you're not there on vacation you, you just need to take it as they're your teacher you're the student remember to get up with that kind of expectation in the day and work to get into a position where you're gonna have your own truck or you're moving into a truck with your friend or, you know, the situation isn't always going to be like this, but you need to treat it like, like it's your job and you really care about it. So now that I'm done with the general ground rules, there's also some other things to keep in mind. If you have other, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's Dakota sleeping. These aren't fully encompassing like everybody's needs. If you have other things that you would like to ask your trainer for, now's the time to ask. You just met them, you haven't yet got on their truck, you need to talk about some things that might be expectations of yours or things that you would like. And so for example, if you want to try to shower every day because there not everybody showers every day it, don't ask me why but truckers just don't sometimes it's it's just the way it goes trucking isn't predictable and not every day you can get a shower but if that is very important to you that you shower every day you talk to your trainer and you say hey 
if it's possible, I would like to shower every morning or every night and they can be sure then to, instead of staying the night at a rest area, they can stay the night at a truck stop or instead of being stuck at a shipper or receiver, they can still try to get to a truck stop for you. The thing is, if they don't know, then you can't, you can't be mad at them for it. If you never asked them and you never communicated your needs to them, you can't be the least bit mad at the way things turned out because communication is important in this relationship. So just, just keep that in mind and kind of bring all those things up front at first. And it just, it makes your experience a little bit easier and it goes so much smoother. Every job isn't the same, of course, but for training, I've come up with like a general list of topics that should be covered in your training, um, no matter what company you're going with. And of course, remember that trainers aren't perfect. They also aren't licensed teachers, you know, they they don't have an education background most of the time and they, and, and not to say that every teacher needs to have that kind of background, but there's a list of things that are pretty general topics that every trainer should go over with you and just keep in mind that you can always ask your trainer to go over these things if if they miss them. First thing is dropping and hooking trailers. Your trainer should obviously show you how to drop a trailer and how to hook a trailer properly for the company that you're going to. Most of them are generally the same. It's all kind of similar. Um, the second one is backing maneuvers. Your trainer should do a good amount of backing practice with you. And this is important, especially because even though you're gonna have a lot of backing practice with your trainer, you're still going to run into places where it's going to challenge you. Every day is going to challenge you. So the more practice with somebody that can help you, the better. They should also go through paperwork with you. A lot of companies have paperwork that you have to fill out after every load in order to get paid. And then there's these systems in the truck stops where you turn them in and it's sent to the company. It's pretty cool. For my job with FX, we actually don't do that. We hand in our papers physically every every day or after every load once we get to the place where we're going and it's all kind of in the company system. They should also teach you about securing your load. So whether you're doing flatbed or reefer or dry van, there's a lot of things that go into securing different loads. And keep in mind that if you're going into dry van originally, you're obviously not gonna learn very much about how to strap a load down for flatbed. So trucking is always a career where you're going to be learning along the way. So once you go into like a different company that does something different, you'll obviously learn from a trainer there. It may not be the same kind of training that you went through for your first job. It might be a little bit quicker and they kind of just show you in a day how to do your job, which I don't know if I'm a fan of or not, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes. And just keep in mind that you don't know, have to know everything right now. And you will learn along the way from other drivers and other trainers for, for different jobs. So just don't, don't stress too much about it. You'll get it. Trainers should also teach you about going through way stations and inspections. So what to expect when you're going through a way station, the paperwork you need to be bringing in, things like that, just because you're eventually going to have to do that. So it'd be nice to know from your first job how to do those kind of things. That brings us to weighing your truck. So I actually don't really have to weigh my truck anymore because if you know FX, they don't haul heavy freight. So most of the time my trailer weights, I do get trailer weights. So. So it's not that I don't know how much my stuff weighs, I just don't bother rolling it over a scale because I'm not going to be overweight. Um, but for things like when you go pick up different loads of things, if you're picking up cans of soup, that's obviously going to be really heavy and your trainer should teach you how to roll over different scales and how to know how to move weight on your truck. So that, that brings us to 
moving tandems. And not all trucks have moving axles, but for dry van and, and some, just the 53 dry boxes, they have sliding tandems and they move together. So there's trailers that have three axles and they have a, a sliding tandem for, or their, one of their axles is fixed and two of them move. Um, for some flatbeds, they have spread axles. There's, there's a bunch of different things, but of course, like I said before, different jobs, you'll have different trainers that will teach you how to use that equipment. So just know the general concept of how to use like a 53 and, you know, slide the tandems. So, and I think you'll be pretty much set for most of the jobs in the future. They should also go over chaining with you. Um, if you're running mostly the southeast, they're probably not going to go through chaining with you um, because it doesn't really snow down there all that much to chain. But um, it's something you should learn about in the future. I'm going to try to make a video of it, hopefully, um, next winter. So be looking out for that. And another thing is we are all on ELDs now. No more... Um, there used to be a type of e-log, it was an A-O-B-R-D or A-B-O-R, it's A, you know what I'm talking about. If, if you're already a driver, you know what I'm talking about. Where you can move the truck and it's still not going to go on your drive time and you can still be off duty up to like a certain miles per hour. Um, used to be able to move the truck. Now, every time you move that truck, it is on duty time and you have to put it on a specific setting if if your company has that setting. Not, not everybody enables a setting called yard move and what it does is it allows you to log that time is on duty instead of driving so it doesn't count down your drive clock. Um, but they should teach you how to use the ELD for that company. Lastly, I hope your trainer teaches you how to use an Atlas if you don't know already. Trucker GPSs, they are very, very, very good tools to have, especially when you start driving. It's nice to know that this thing is already thought out for you, the route you're gonna take. I take the time and I double check my trucker GPS because I know from experience that that thing can lie and it'll take you down roads that it really shouldn't take you down and it can it can make a good day turn into a really really bad day really quickly so just make sure you double check know how to read an atlas so that way if you get in some crazy situation you can double check so i think that pretty much sums up all the things that I think a general trainer should teach you and hopefully they go over everything they may not go over everything nobody's perfect but these are some things that you might be learning on your trainer's truck let's move on to knowing your boundaries so when you get on your trainer's truck you're gonna bump heads and so this is going to be kind of frustrating and kind of stressful you need to just remember to breathe and be calm and think through things Know that these things are going to happen and also know that if things do get bad, know what you're willing to put up with. So, I mean, and there's things where it's crossed a line, right? So that's when it comes to knowing your boundaries and knowing when it's time to get off the truck. So know this up front. You can get off that truck at any time, at any second, any day and you need to make sure that you protect yourself. Now, just because you and your trainer have a little fight about being 20 minutes late to a shipper or something like that, that's not necessarily a good reason to get off the truck. I understand if things escalate and they start calling you names and they start saying vulgar comments to you, now that's not acceptable. That's a reason to get off your trainer's truck. and. I think what I what I want to say about this is that whatever company you're going with has some criteria for what is unacceptable behavior and what the process is to go through to get off your trainer's truck. So make sure that you're aware of all of your options before you get on your trainer's truck. 
Um, same thing goes with the trainer though. If you start fighting with the trainer, they can kick you off any second. So just, I mean, you're, you're in more of a vulnerable place, obviously, being the trainee, but at the same time, you have a lot of control over your own situation with how you react to things. So know that your trainer could get frustrated that you've tried to back into a spot five times and you're just not getting it. Um, they might get a little frustrated. That's, I mean, they shouldn't. If they're a trainer, they shouldn't, but d they're human. These are gonna happen and just remember to breathe and that they're human too and they make mistakes and just, just let them know, hey, I'm doing my best. I'm really sorry that I'm not getting it right away and just keep trying. That's all you can do is keep trying, doing your best and show them that you're willing to learn and work hard for this because a lot of this doesn't come easy. It's, it's very hard to back into a lot of places and I can say some days my first year driving over the road there were days where I woke up and it was like it was like I'd never been in a truck before <laughs> and so it happens to the best of us and it'll probably it happens to me sometimes even lately sometimes I'm backing my bobtail and I'm like treating it like a trailer I'm like oh my gosh you know it just, it happens. Sometimes your brain is spaghetti. It's okay. Finally, with everything that I've said in this video so far, I want you to know, don't have unrealistic expectations of what training is going to be like. You're never going to learn everything you need to know for a job within that training period. And that's okay. We learn every day as drivers. If we knew everything there was to know about being on the road in like a couple of months, that would, that would just be crazy because there's just so much information and so much of it has to do with experience. And so just keep in mind that you will grow every day, even when you're on your own. And keep in mind that you can also talk to other drivers. And a lot of drivers out here will go out of their way to help other drivers. Just, if you don't know something, come up and ask. And What's really cool lately because of technology and everything and everybody's sharing everything, I've seen a lot of scale tickets. So when you when you weigh a truck, you'll get a scale ticket that will show you your axle weights. And some people will post that and say, hey, can somebody help me figure out how to move this weight to make it legal? And a lot of people will, you know, be right there to comment and help you. So just know that there's probably a lot of resources for you and don't be stressed about learning everything in this training period. Now that we're done with the what to expect on a trainer's truck portion, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about my own experience. Um, I went away to trucking school, um, very far away from my home at the time, and I did what I needed to do. I got my license. I was in a hotel for my trucking school. So um, I sat there and I waited for a phone call. And they called me and they let me know that if I wanted a female trainer, which is something that you can request as a female um, student driver, you can request to have a female trainer. Um, they told me that it would be about a three month waiting period and I was like, no, no, it's okay. I will take a male trainer. Um, so I hung up the phone and I waited and in a couple of days they called me back and they said, okay, we have a trainer for you. And now keep in mind that you are now like basically property of the company and they can do anything they want with you. So they can send you on a plane, they can put you on a bus, they can put you in a truck right out of the hotel. They can do a lot of things. And so what they did for me was they said, hey, we have a Greyhound bus ticket for you to Tennessee. And I was like, oh my gosh. So this is about a little less than 500 miles on a Greyhound bus. I rode on a Greyhound bus all the way to Tennessee where I was to meet this trainer. 
and I did happen to speak with him before I got on the bus so I I knew he was going to be meeting me there so that was cool um, but I also I had no idea what to bring so I've only had what I brought to trekking school because I had no idea that like for some reason it never occurred to me that I need to buy bed sheets and a pillow and all these other things to be on the truck so when I got to him he was like he was like, you need to go to Walmart? And I was like, yeah, because <laughs> I don't have anything. And he was like super caught off guard by it because he thought that I would know these things, but I came into trucking not knowing anything. So it, it's just, I didn't have anybody to teach me. That's part of the reason I'm making these videos is because if there's anybody out there like me who doesn't know anything and just wants a little bit of something to kind of give them a guideline of what it's going to be like, then I'm hoping this will be that for you and encourage you that it's not as bad. It can be bad, but it's not as bad as not knowing, you know? So I hope this helps. And so basically when I first got to him, he avoided me a lot like he avoided talking to me he avoided being around me and I quickly found out why that was he was around my age he was a little bit older than me um, he was about five years older than me so like he was around my age and he stayed away from me because he had um, a very protective girlfriend at the time and I completely understand that and I felt I'm one of those people that feels just really guilty about being in somebody else's space. So I felt in somebody else's space, but I was very lucky to have a trainer who had very good personal hygiene and kept the truck so clean. It smelled really good in there. I think he had like these Yankee candle scents that he put in the truck. Anyways, it just, it was really nice. And, um, so I stayed away from him and he stayed away from me and then after a while um, of working together we got to know each other, I talked to him a lot and for my training experience I was the only one driving and he was sitting in the passenger seat kind of directing me and helping me know what to do. Um, when it came to parking in the docks on the first couple of places he obviously parked the truck just so we could get things moving and then he would find places where I could practice parking um, which I think is a good system you don't want to like hold up too many people at the dock when it's really busy at a ship or a receiver oh anyways I'm trying to like remember this in the back of my head um, he had home time every two weeks. So every two weeks, I spent in Virginia, just in a hotel on the weekend. And I found things to do. I went and visited a museum. I walked at a park. Um, you just kind of got to keep yourself entertained. Um, I did get to meet his girlfriend and his girlfriend and I became really, really good friends. We we're actually closer to the same age. And um, so she wasn't really upset with me being on the truck with him anymore, so that was really cool. My trainer did not have a microwave on the truck. Um, he also had a very tiny refrigerator that we could only really keep drinks in. So I was left to eat just kind of crazy stuff. Like, I think I ate a lot of tomato soup and crackers and I ate uh, I ate Uncle Ben's ready rice, you know the ones that are in the pouches where you could just rip open and put them in the microwave? I ate a lot of that and this is kind of embarrassing. I ate pop tarts and granola bars and just, I didn't eat very good on my trainer's truck. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's okay. I can't eat out a lot because I have a lot of food allergies so that was just very interesting. Anyways, it didn't last forever. I think I was on his truck for two months or less. 
and you know then I got my own truck and that was really nice I didn't really have a bad experience with my trainer he was clean and nice and he basically just laughed at my mistakes like in a in a caring way not like haha you you suck kind of like and you should feel bad about it he was like oh my gosh like that's so silly and he would make like little nicknames this is gonna be embarrassing you guys are gonna call me these things now <laughs> so in a lot of people if you've been to those small towns in New Jersey or you know right before you get out to the rural areas they're kind of less populated towns he would call me curb killer because I would get so close to the curb sometimes I would like kiss it like right on the side so he called me curb killer <laughs> and that was just you know kind of a funny joke anyways we had a good time we laughed a lot and my experience wasn't bad. There are plenty of videos online of terrible experiences. The only thing that I can say is, um, you know, when things get tough and you get frustrated, I mean, uh, I think there were times where I did get frustrated and I just wanted time away. So I would take a walk. Um, and I just walk around the truck stop and it's funny, but time heals things. It, it heals your emotions, it heals your feelings, you know? You just kind of gotta give yourself time to calm down from something. And a lot of that is just, don't let your emotions and feelings build up and make you do things that you'll regret in the future. So anyways, I hope you take this and you go, into your training a little bit more aware of some of the things that it's going to be like. Also check out that article about what to bring on your trainer's truck where I have compiled a list of a bunch of things that uh, you should think about bringing to trucking school with you because that's where you're going to go next is to your trainer's truck. So a lot to keep in mind. Um, also, a lot of the community has commented on that video and added some extra things that I think are important to think about and just just kind of go over there, read through the comments. I'm just, I'm really happy that you guys are just becoming a family over here and like kind of just helping everybody out because this is what it's about. Um, we need to get back to helping each other. That's it for today guys. I hope that I have put enough in this video to help you. As always, if you feel like I've missed anything, please put it down in the comments below. Somebody else could use it um, or it's something that they have questions about. Ask questions down below, answer questions down below, add some more stuff because I don't know everything and I obviously have not had, you know, some of the worst experiences. So maybe put your experience down below if you think somebody can learn from it. Um, as always, Dakota and I say bye bye and um, please watch the next one and remember to like the video because it helps. And if you don't like the video, dislike it because that also helps me know whether or not you guys like these kind of videos or if you have constructive criticism put it down below anyways i hope you guys have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this and uh we'll see you in the next one bye Skittles.